Well, we could talk about cheese, but let's talk song. This video is going to try and answer the question what happens if we take a Jacob Collier song and get rid of all of Jacob Collier's superpowers. Namely, the musical virtuosity that this person has. There's not a lot I can offer for that. Then we've got the huge production that comes along with Jacob Collier songs. And last but not least, the arrangement, especially the vocal arrangement and a lot of choirs, a lot of very dense voices. Let's get rid of everything and look at the song. We are going to analyze Jacob Collier's new single Little Blue and we're going to do that by changing the order that I usually do. First we're going to look at the lyrics, after that there's going to be a harmony and a little melody analysis and finally we are going to see how Jacob Collier nicely brings together lyrics and chords in terms of prosody. Let's get going. Little blue, be my shelter, be my cradle, be my womb, be my boat, be my river, be the stillness of the moon. If I could, I'd go with you. To a place I never knew In your eyes, dark and open There's a light that leads me back to you Cause you're not so far away I hear you say you never walk alone of the dark in your heart you're gonna find a way to carry the weight of the world on your shoulders you're gonna find a way home little blue be my anchor be my light, my compass star Be my darkness, be my danger Be the strings of my guitar Little blue, how I love you Something strong and something true in your arms, so dear and gentle There's a light that leads me back to you Cause you're not so far away I hear you say You never walk alone Singing, don't be afraid of the dark in your heart You're gonna find a way To carry the weight of the world On your shoulders You're gonna find a way Don't be afraid of the light It's all right You're gonna find a way Carry the weight of the world on your shoulders You're gonna find a way home As announced, we are going to start with the lyrics today and we are going to directly look into verse number one. That is, little blue, be my shelter, be my cradle, be my womb. What beautiful words. Be my boat, be my river, be the stillness of the moon. If I could, I'd go with you to a place I never knew. In your eyes, so dark and open, 
There's a light that leads me back to you. It's almost a poem. That's how beautifully the words are intertwined. Let's look at the structure behind it for a second. We have got quite an interesting rhyming pattern that is actually XA, XA all the way through. So if we look at the words that don't rhyme at all, we see that at the end of lines 1, 3, 5 and 7, we've got the words shelter, river, with you and open. Words that don't rhyme at all and it was almost difficult to get words that are so different from each other. So this is another competence that you have to have. Find words that don't rhyme if your rhyming pattern is actually X. And then we've got the rhyme words and the rhyme words are womb, moon, new and you. So it's very clear that we have those ooh rhymes and it's a very, very clear pattern. Now a second quite remarkable thing with the words at the end of every line is how the word stresses are different. Now if we look at the X lines where we've got the words shelter, river, with you and open, we see that the endings of those lines are always following the pattern stressed, unstressed. So we always end with an unstressed syllable. Bidim. That's also called a feminine ending, I think, to the line. Whereas the A lines, so the ones that actually do rhyme, have got a stressed word at the ending of the line, which would then make them masculine rhymes, masculine words. Quite interesting as well, and something that we've seen in a lot of music analysis videos before. Verse number two follows the same established rhyming pattern at the beginning, but ends with a little variation. We've got the lines, little blue be my anchor, be my light, my compass star, be my darkness, be my danger, be the strings on my guitar. So again, we see that star and guitar rhyme very, very clearly, whereas anchor and danger are not really there. So those would be again the X lines. Second half, where we suddenly don't repeat the rhymes from first verse half. Little blue, how I love you. Something strong and something true in your arms, so dear and gentle. There's a home that leads me back to you. Now, because the ending of verse number two is very similar to verse number one, where it said, there's a light that leads me back to you, we need to go back to those ooh rhymes at the end of the lines, which is why they break this XA, XA pattern and then go to something that I would call XB, XB. What's very clear if we look at both verses is the metric rhythm. So we have a very, very clear rhythm that is Badam bum, little blue in that case, badam badam, be my shelter. And then a longer line that says badam 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 bum. It's always the same, very, very strict in terms of metric rhythm. However, there is one line that breaks this metric rhythm, and it's this be my darkness, be my danger. It should be da da dim and not da da didum, right? Be my darkness should be rather something like be my dark. Why that is, we will find out in the third part of this video. If we look at what I would call the transitional bridge between verse and chorus, we see the words, cause you're not so far away, I hear you say you'll never walk alone. What we see here is that we've got a three line verse, on that case, transitional bridge. Three lines is an uneven number of lines, something quite powerful when you want to build suspense and want to build momentum towards a following part, in that case, the chorus. So here we can see that three lines and this unbalance, this feeling of unbalance that they create actually urge us to go to the chorus quite quickly. Also, if we look at the rhyming pattern in that very short transitional bridge, we can see that it's AAX, because you're not so far away. I hear you say you never walk alone. So you never walk alone is the line that stands for itself and that wants us to move towards the chorus because this creates tension and it needs resolution. And then finally, it's the very, very beautiful chorus words. Chorus number one is don't be afraid of the dark in your heart. You're going to find a way to carry the weight of the world on your shoulders. You're going to find a way home. Now, what's quite interesting with that very beautiful chorus is that nothing really rhymes, but the lines go together perfectly. 
Now, if you want to know why that is, you better stay until the end of the video where I go into the topic of prosody and I try and find reasons why those lines go together so perfectly without needing to rhyme actually. Chorus number two adds the second part to the chorus that then says, don't be afraid of the light, it's all right. And the other lines repeat from the first half. So those are the chorus words that don't really rhyme, but that make perfect sense together. And we are going to find out why in the third part of that video. We are now going to look at chords and melody of the song. First of all, let me tell you that we are in the key of E flat and those are the verse chords. E flat with G in bass to A flat. Now this E flat with G in bass is a very short passing chord that's due to that very, very interesting harmonic rhythm that we've got here. So we've got anticipation, but we also have got syncopation. And in the same pattern, we play the next two chords. B flat, short passing chord, that then goes to C minor. Then, again, E flat with G in bass, this time not going to A flat, but instead to F minor 7. We still have got the A flat shape in the right hand, but only the bass note changes. And then we go to some kind of B flat voicing. Now, B flat is the dominant chord in E flat, and the Voicing that I found quite interesting was some kind of B flat sus voicing where we have this very suspended airy vibe to it. And it's very difficult to actually hear the correct chords with the very, very complex arrangement in Jacob Collier's songs, but this is the voicing that I chose. It's that A flat shape in the right hand with a B flat bass note. Now, if we want to talk chord stage degrees, we can see, and this time we're leaving out those passing chords because they don't really have a harmonic function in terms of chord stage degrees. We would have this A flat as the fourth stage degree, then goes to the six minor, C minor, and then we've got a very clear and traditional two minor five one chord progression, something that we know from jazz. So F minor to B flat to E flat, two minor to five to one, a very jazzy chord progression at the end of the verse. In terms of verse melody, there's not a lot I want to mention, except that the thirds of the chord play quite an important role in the melodies throughout the song. Plus, in the verse, we see that the melodic rhythm clearly follows this harmonic rhythm. When we have this da da for chords, we also sing Little Blue, be my shelter. So those chords being played in that very, very special harmonic rhythm also reappear in the melody rhythm. Quite interesting. Let's now look at the chords of the transitional bridge number one. The transitional bridges are probably my favorite parts because they get so freaky dicky. It's really, really fascinating. Let's look at the chords. C minor, then probably G minor with B flat and bass, A flat, E flat with G, and then we've got something quite interesting. B flat minor suddenly, that then does this here. That's interesting. We go from B flat minor to A flat with C in bass, to D flat, something that's also rather new in the key of E flat, and then go to E flat. Let's do harmonic analysis here. What actually happens? We start with six minor of E flat, then we go to three minor, and then to four. So far, so conventional. But then we do something quite interesting, which is we play the five in the minor voicing. The five minor is a clear indication for the fact that here we do modal interchange. We actually jump from E flat Ionian, E flat regular, E flat major, if you will, to E flat mixolydian, where the fifth stage degree is actually a minor degree. From that five minor, we go to four, 
as a passing chord. And then we've got the flat seven to one, something that is quite usual within the realms of Mixolydian. So flat seven to one is something quite interesting. Also, the harmonic rhythm changes completely. We've got a lot of half notes at the beginning and at the end of the transitional bridge, we even have got the Bon Jovi. The Bon Jovi, rem remember, is a very special way to anticipate your second downbeat. That means you've got dotted quarter note followed by that anticipated second downbeat. Let's look at this very special harmonic rhythm together with the special chords. And actually, we add something here. That's this D flat to A flat with C and bass. That is going to be the chord before the chorus chord. Let's hear that with the melody. Cause you're not so far away. I hear you say. This is the melody note, and this is probably why it comes so naturally to do modal interchange. Because this here is the fourth stage degree of E Ionian. So this melody note also appears in E flat Ionian and what we do change is just this upper voicing. We go from major to minor, which is something that doesn't hurt the melody. You never walk alone. Bon Jovi here. Again Bon Jovi. So in total there are two rather remarkable things in transitional bridge number one. One, the modal interchange to E flat mixolydian. And secondly, this play with the rhythmic suspense. What we've got here is an acceleration in the middle of transitional bridge number one, when we go from this harmonic rhythm, half notes that then goes to quarter notes that then goes to the Bon Jovi. But at the same time, we slow down by adding this additional bar, by adding this second Bon Jovi. So we kind of accelerate and then we slow down and get smoothed in to listen to the chorus, the thing that is going to be next. The third and last important chord progression is the one in the chorus that goes like this. E flat, F minor seven, B flat, and then F minor, E flat with G, A flat, and B flat. We find that we are back in E flat Ionian. One, two minor, five, rather conventional, and then two minor, one, four, five. Don't be afraid of the dark in your heart. You're gonna find a way to carry the weight and so on. The one thing that we need to look at before moving to this prosody bit of the video is transitional bridge number two that goes really crazy in terms of harmony. Let's look at transitional bridge number two and all the things that actually do change. We start with C minor and G minor with B flat and bass. So far, so transitional bridge number one. But then we go to A minor, E minor, so suddenly we are in the key of C Ionian. We do not modal interchange, but modulation to C Ionian. And then we have another modulation to probably something that would be A Ionian. B minor, A with C sharp and bass, and then D, and then goes to E. This is quite interesting, right? So we start, we are in the key of E flat, pretty clearly, six minor, E flat, but suddenly we break the pattern completely and we land on this A minor, where before that, we had this A flat chord. Now, where does this sudden modulation come from? I can tell you, it comes from the melody note that offers a pivot note to go from E flat to C Ionian. And that pivot note is the C note. Now let's look at the melody 
that was in transitional bridge number one and let's see what inspired this modulation. Cause you're not so far away This is the melody note here. We've got the C. The C also appears in A minor. So what Jacob Collier does in transitional bridge number two is Cause you're not so far away I hear you say And creates a very subtle shift from E flat to C Two keys that are quite apart from each other but that still share some features, for example, this C pivot note. Are so far away, I hear you say. Very subtle, very smooth. And then. And never walk alone. So again, we do something that is pivot note. Cause you're not so far away, I hear you say. So this A here suddenly serves as the flat seven of a second modulation within a very short span of time. And now we have got B flat minor, A, sorry, regular B flat, A, D, and E. What's also interesting is to go back to the chorus number two, that is again an E flat, we modulate like this. I don't understand it, but I like it. What happens here is. So this is clearly a 4 5 ending for that phrase. But this couldn't be further away from that. You can't really do that. So what Jacob Collier does here is he introduces yet another chord, B. And then from that B. He goes to A flat with C in bass, something that we know from E flat, and then creates a very nice transition to chorus number two. This is nerdy, this is brilliant. Third part of the video, the one where we look at prosody and the question where the lyrics and the music actually intertwine. Let's look at the lyrics first. There are two things that we observed while analyzing the lyrics. Number one, we break the very, very strict metric rhythm in the verse once. And this is with the line, be my darkness, be my danger. Isn't that great to say, yes, you've got a little temptation. You've got the devil sneaking into the line and breaking the metric rhythm. Be my darkness, be my danger. It should be da -da -dim, da -da -da -dim. but instead we add this nis syllable. Really, really impressive and I think very, very intentional and thoughtful. And secondly, we wanted to know why the words make perfect sense in the chorus without rhyming. And that's because of the meaning of the song and the intention and the topic. All in all, we can say without going into detail too much, that the song is about a person that somehow feels lost, that needs this little blue, whatever this might mean, is it a pill, I don't really know, to soothe him or herself. So when we look at the person being somehow lost, a chorus that doesn't rhyme at all makes perfect sense. It's very soothing still, and if we look at the words, we can see that it's about not being afraid of something. Don't be afraid of the dark in your heart. You're gonna find a way, but you haven't found it yet, which is why there is no rhymes in the chorus just yet, because you haven't really found your way home yet. Isn't that cool? By the way, that chorus is also the first part that introduces the tonic as the starting chord and where especially this very nice progression at the end of the chorus leads to the one that is on the syllable home. You're gonna find your way home. Now, if that isn't great prosody to say you're gonna find your way home, you are not there yet, which is why we don't use rhymes, but we can show you by playing the tonic that you are very close to getting home, actually. Very, very nice, intentional, thoughtful, prosodic songwriting. If we want to get really nerdy, we could even argue that those modal interchange slash modulations in the transitional bridge have some kind of prosodic element to 
to them. Now, first of all, they do follow a specific pattern. And that's always a minor third down, the minor median down. That's a very nerdy word that I myself learned in the almost but not quite complete guide to songwriting that you should get. Minor median down. So the minor median to E flat, the minor median down, is C. The minor median from C down is A. And we could see that the two modulations that we do are actually both a third, a minor third down. Now, what does that have to do with prosody? Let's look at the words. Because you're not so far away, I hear you say you never walk alone. Yes, it says you're not so far away, but you are away. Which is why in the chords, we show that we are far away, not so far away, because at the end we find a very gentle way to modulate back towards the original key. Plus, and here we enter nerd level 13, if we say that this B chord that we introduce to prepare the modulation back towards the E flat is actually the four chord of F sharp. And we all know that the A flat that comes after that is the four chord of E flat. Then we would have a modulation circle that goes down minor thirds all the way until we reach E flat again. This is quite nerdy, but bear with me. Look at what I'm telling you. At the beginning of the transitional bridge, we are in the key of E flat. Now we go to C. This was down a minor third. Then we go to A. And then we play this strange chord that nobody really knew where it came from. Now what if we followed this movement always down a minor third. That means from E flat we went to C major, from C major we went to A major. Now the logical next step would be to move from A major to F sharp major, where this B chord is the fourth stage degree chord. This, in an isolated fashion, this interpretation doesn't make any sense, but Remembering that the next chord is actually A flat, that we know as the four chord of E flat Ionian, then we could say it's four to four. And in terms of modulation, F sharp to E sharp, and we are back where we started. Because you're not so far away. You'll never walk alone, and that's why even the wildest modulations, if followed through correctly, end up home anyway. In summary, I think it became pretty clear that you can cut off Jacob Collier's arms and legs, and he will always and still be a very, very great, prolific and creative songwriter. Because Jacob Collier is not just the kid that does great vocal arrangement, that can play a lot of instruments really fast and that does great and freaky production, but he is a keen follower of the great songwriters of the last, we could say, two centuries. He knows who to take as inspiration and especially he knows how to take ideas and make them his own. He is one of the greatest, 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 plus apparently fashion icon and all in all very, very nice person. I wish I could meet him sometime. I guess this is it. As always, if you like this, make sure to give me the thumbs up, to subscribe to the channel if you haven't done yet, to leave comments in which you say how good or bad that video was, but especially to suggest other songs that you would like me to dissect. I guess we've talked song, you can talk about cheese now. I guess this is it. If you like this, please make sure to leave the thumbs up to describe. Uh, I guess this is it. As always, if you like this, please make sure to give me the thumbs up to describe some I guess this is it. As always, if you like this, make sure to give me the Mach ich nicht mit Absicht.